Hi, this video is a quick tour of Solar System's Moon Trek, which you'll use for the Artemis Rhodes Challenge and the Artemis Rhodes Companion Course. Before we go into the Moon Trek, I wanted to show the main Solar System's Trek page so that you can see that there are short tutorials for some of the features that your students might want to use on the main page. Here we've zoomed in on the moon trek, but you can also see some of the other objects that NASA has made treks for on this page as well. In order to get into the moon trek, I'm going to click on the explore button here. When the moon trek loads, it will give you the option of doing a tutorial. I recommend you do this tutorial if it's the first time you're going through the moon trek. It's pretty quick and it shows you some of the features and options in the menu available in the trek. We're going to keep this video specific to the features we anticipate you'll use during the challenge, so I'm going to close out of the tour. When the trek loads, it shows you a rectangular map of the moon. Uh, hopefully some of these features look familiar to you. Of course, the moon is a sphere, so when you stretch out the map of a spherical object onto a rectangle, you're going to get distortion at the poles, and your students might notice that if they zoom to polar regions in this map view. For that reason, NASA has given different projections of maps within NASA Trek. So if you go to the bottom left, you can change the projection. Right now it's on global map, but I can switch it to a three-dimensional globe. This is a fun one because the moon looks like what it looks like uh, in the night sky. And any of these maps, I can click and drag to change what I'm looking at. For the Artemis Challenge and Companion Course, we're going to be thinking about the South Pole of the Moon, so that's another map that I can load. I can zoom in using the plus and minus buttons, and here I'm zooming in on the very South Pole of the map. You'll see as I zoom in that there's some artifacts on the map that the students might have questions about. In particular, there's linear features, there's regions where the image resolution changes, there's some images that look like they were plopped on top of one another. For example, uh, these features here don't blend seamlessly for with whatever the background image is. And it's important to note that these treks are made with real NASA images and data taken from orbiters. To make these maps, NASA has layered many images from different missions or different instruments uh, together to make a mosaic. You can change things about the base map or the underlying map in the bottom right. Okay, here you can see the base map is uh, from this particular data set here. NASA likes acronyms, so it's the LRO, LROC, WAC image mosaic of the South Pole. I can learn more about this data set by clicking on or the eye icon. And here I can get a little bit more information, including what all those letters stand for. So this is a mosaic used with or made with Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter Camera Data. That's what the LROC stands for. And it's from the Wide Angle Camera, which is what the WAC stands for. And I can also get some other basic information here. In particular, uh, I know that these images are monochrome or black and white. So that's the very base map that they're using to make the global map that I'm looking at on Trek. I can turn that map on and off by clicking on the eye icon, and you can see that eliminates some of the features that I'm looking at on my screen. I can download that map here, and I can also change its visibility or its transparency with the slider. There's also some layers that are automatically loaded here. They are layers from another instrument on uh, the same mission, or in particular, the narrow angle camera. I can turn those layers on and off as well. And I'll zoom in on this region so you can see what effect that has. When I turn them off, you can see that a lot of what looks like overlaying images on top of this base map. Another feature I'd like to show you with this base map is this nomenclature one. I can click on it. And when I click on it, the map will be loaded with the names of features on the moon. So in particular here, we're looking at the names of craters, but also other regions that have been given names on the South Pole. Okay, so now I'm gonna go over to the data menu, which is on the top left. When I click on the data menu, 
I'm offered many more layers that are based on NASA data sets from different instruments and different missions that I can put on top of my base map. In order to make this as simple to understand as possible, I'm going to change my projection back to the global map, the one we started with. You'll see when I do that initially, because I am zoomed in on the pole, I get kind of a distorted image. I'm going to click on the reset tab to give me the view that I started with. And then when I click on data again, it's giving me different sets of data that I can overlay on this map uh, that are associated with this particular view. You can see there's a lot of them. There's a lot of data for the moon. You can use the search tab to narrow that down. You can also um, search by product type. Layer that I'd like to show you, we'll start with an easy one. And that is the layers from the Apollo mission. When I click on the layer, I get an image here and some description of this data set. In this case, it's the description of the Apollo 11 mission on the surface of the moon. I've got some buttons down here I can use. The first is fly to area. This actually just flies me on the map to the area of the moon associated with this data set. In this case, I'll show you when we zoom out, but it's at a mid latitude. Okay, and then I can add this data set to my map. For the lunar missions, this is going to, or the Apollo missions, this is going to add points associated with that Apollo mission to the map. And if I scroll down here on my layers menu, I can uh, learn more about any particular point that was put on the map. In particular, I can click on this one. And when I go back to my map, I can read about the data associated with that point. This is where the lunar module descent stage exists on the moon, was left on the moon, uh, which is part of uh, the lunar module or LEM used by that Apollo mission. Notice that these markers stay on the map, even if I zoom all the way back out. Okay, so now I can see on a global view where Apollo 11 mission landed and took place. Okay, for Artemis, we're going to the South Pole. So I'm gonna go back to the South Pole view and I'll show you a few different data sets that will be of interest to you and your students. The first data set uh, I'm gonna show you is going to help you find the regions where water ice was discovered on the moon. So it's called the M3 Ice Exposures data set. And this is the one in particular for the South Pole of the moon. And just like the Apollo set, I can add this data set to my map of the moon. And here now I can see on my map, I've got a bunch of blue markers. I can zoom in if I want. And when I do that, I can see that these blue markers, right, are associated with where water ice was detected on the moon. And mostly that's going to occur near the shadowed regions. Like I said, water ice is associated with permanently shadowed regions, so that might be something that they are interested in looking at. There's quite a few options for how to display permanently shadowed regions on the moon trek, but this is a nice one. If I click on it and I add it to the map, now I've got red points that indicate regions that are permanently shadowed on the moon. Okay, another layer that the students might want to uh, upload onto their moon trek map is one that will help them understand the hazards of driving on the moon. And that's a better way to understand slopes. Okay, so I'm gonna search for slope. And again, you'll see for slopes, a lot of data is going to load because they're is a lot of data about slopes on the moon. It's very relevant to the upcoming rover missions and uh, manned missions to the moon. Okay, for this particular one, I want a global map and I happen to know uh, how to search for that global map. So I'm just gonna keep putting in the keywords that I know. Again, we'll provide this information to you and your students. But this here is a large scale map of slopes on the moon. I can add it to my base map in this case, instead of adding points, it's actually going to add a large map of the slopes of the South Pole of the Moon. Before I let you see that full thing on the moon, I wanted to note that if you want to know what these colors mean in terms of slopes, I can go above the image here and click on Show Legend. 
And now I get a legend where I can read off what the colors mean in terms of the slope angle on the moon. So for example, orange indicates slopes between 15 and 30 degrees. Okay, so now when I close this, I can see that there is a rectangular region on the south pole of the moon where we have slope data, and that's what's been added to my base map. There's one more data set that I would like to show you, and that is a data set that will allow you to see the train on the moon even in data set is known as a hill shade data set. Like the slope data set, there's a lot of different options. Many of these are for smaller regions around particular craters. So I'm going to load this one down here, the South Pole one, 75 degrees hillshade. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add that layer to my map. And you can see here, when I add that layer, uh, before where it was dark because it was a shaded region in the visible imagery. Now see some of the terrain within the craters. Okay, so I've got four different layers loaded on my base map right now, and I can see all of the layers by clicking on the layers tab here. Just like the base map, I can toggle the layers on and off. I can gather more information about them, and I can also change their visibility with this scale. Okay, the last thing I wanted to show was what's in the upper right hand menu here. So in particular, I want to show the calculate distance and calculate elevation profile. So let's start with calculate distance. When I click on this, I get a box that pops up. There's different ways I can calculate distance on the moon. I can do it along a straight line, a polyline, which is a curvy line that I kind of define the wiggles of, or the most flexible option is to do a freehand polyline. I'm going to click on that. And now I can just click on my mouse and drag and draw whatever path on the moon I want. After I release my mouse, it, a window will pop up and give me the distance of that path. This is the distance, by the way, traveled along the surface. So it's not a uh, overview distance, it is the distance to go into this crater along the slope here and then across the bottom. To calculate an elevation profile, I can do something very similar. Going back to my menu here, I can click on elevation profile, click on the same free polyline, and again, I can click and drag to draw a path along the surface of the moon. Now when I release, it's going to take a moment to calculate. It'll give me the distance. I can click Submit. And now it's giving me the elevation profile along that line. If I drag this over here, you can see that as I mouse over the elevation profile window, it'll travel along the path that I've drawn on the moon. The elevation profile is given in meters on our vertical uh, axis here, and it's actually the K stands for kilometers. So this is 2,000 meters. Okay, the zero is at the mean lunar elevation. And then along the bottom here, you have distance from the start of your line. Okay, and that's distance along the slope, not distance as seen from above. You can export this data uh, into an Excel file by clicking on export. Okay, the very last thing that I would like to show you is just how to produce an image from Moontrek. Of course, you can use a screen capturing device, but you can also screen capture directly in Moontrek. It'll capture whatever's on the center of the map and save it as a JPEG image uh, when you click on this link. Okay, that's your tour of Moontrek. I hope you guys enjoy using it and enjoy the challenge.